Hi there, I'm Lillian. Welcome to my channel. Here I talk about what it's like to wake up and find out that you're married to a covert narcissist. How I was baited through love bombing, trapped by a trauma bond, and stuck blind in a kind of Stockholm syndrome for 34 years. Here I share my journey of healing that released me from captivity in hopes that God will use me as an example to any sister in Christ that might be stuck like I was, unable to tell the difference between abuse and love. That you, if it's you, will allow God to heal and restore your feminine heart so that you'll be able to see the difference between a difficult husband and a dangerous man. In this video, it's the second part of a series I'm doing on submission. Today, I'm gonna to talk about what Paul means when he says to learn what are good things and teach them. I can't think of anything that's more good than understanding the complete concept of submission instead of bits and pieces to fit a religious narrative or um, ideology that's not scriptural. I was never taught a lot about submission, much less any kind of knowledge about masculine and feminine behaviors in relationship to each other. Don't get me wrong, there's lots of voices that talk about submission, but all the information usually boils down to the same single unhelpful advice. <laughs> Just do it. And it makes all the problems go away and everything gets better. There is a place for submission in marriage, but that connection has nothing to do with femininity and masculinity. A feminine heart that's wounded, unrestored or otherwise broken, will either reject submission completely or embrace submission in an unhealthy way, which is what I did. Both are wrong, not good for marriage, and were never God's intention for his daughters or his sons being in relationship with each other. I want to start with defining a good thing. It's not just a what, it's also a who. A good thing is you. A man who finds a wife finds a good thing. God says that when masculinity finds a good thing, it's because he's found femininity. Another good thing is how you understand your own femininity for you. God didn't create you as an XY, but an XX. You can't reflect God's best if you don't understand your own feminine heart that he created inside of you. Do you know that about you? Your feminine heart is a good thing. God said it's not good that the human is alone. I will make it good. She will be a good thing. The next time you're in Walmart, walk back and forth between the little girls and the women's clothing areas. You'll notice a startling thing. The little girl's area is all rainbows, flowers, sparkly things and color lots of color. <clears throat> then by the time you get to the woman's clothing, <clears throat> excuse me, all the color and sparkly, expressive, beautiful fun is gone. You are still that feminine sparkle inside, but she's been stunted. At about six or seven years old and hasn't been allowed to grow or develop. We hide her because we think femininity is useless and has no different or special ability or purpose. We've allowed our specially God-created femininity to become an embarrassment because it looks nothing like masculinity. Another good thing is not just understanding your own feminine personality, but how beautiful femininity is when she's in relationship to masculinity. It's a good thing to be in a one flesh relationship. It's balancing, but not in the way you think, like the way we see balance. Um, 
like a perfectly even and equal ratio of 50-50. God doesn't balance like we see things. If he did, when he created us feminine creatures, the good things, he would have created Eve with an equal amount of testosterone to Adam so that they would each have 50% estrogen and 50% testosterone. But he didn't do that. Masculinity doesn't become feminine, nor does femininity become masculine. But together, 100% masculine and 100% feminine, they build something completely new, becoming one flesh. Good things are right things. Things that are beautiful, good, valuable, and virtuous, and worthy of learning. Things that are honest and true. I can't think of anything more true or more valuable and worthy of learning than how you, sister, were created full of estrogen for the purpose of embodying all your femininity. Remember, God didn't create you as a wife. He created you first in the womb as a female. You fill the role of a wife, but it's not who you are. I didn't know how to be any of those things. In God's eyes, I believed I was chosen, his daughter, and I was high quality because he saw me that way, because of Christ's blood. And God knows everything, right? The trouble was, I didn't see me that way. I believed that God loved me because he loves everyone, but I didn't believe that he loved Lillian. I did not know what it felt like to be loved. There's a difference. That's why John used two different words in 1 John 4, 16. One is the word pistuo. It's the head knowledge of God's love. There's no emotion, no feeling, just academic truth. The other one is gnasco when you perceive through the experience of feeling his love. I was unloved and would have done almost anything for a drop of attention or affection from a man. Of course, I wouldn't have verbally identified myself that way, nor could have I could have articulated that feeling of emotional starvation inside of me. I just thought all women felt incomplete, unvalidated, ignored, lonely and empty inside. Make no mistake about it. If your femininity as a little girl was not validated, cherished, or uplifted, you are living out a masculine nature. That means you strive, contend, and compete for success. That's the nature of testosterone. Your femininity was abused because it was neglected and unnurtured. So, as a pattern of living, you identified with the masculine nature because accomplishment and striving is how you got attention. It's how you got noticed. And that is the design of femininity, to be noticed. So you were getting noticed, yet your femininity was still starving for attention and validation of who she really is as a female. I became a people pleaser. The weakest kind of broken is an emotionally starved feminine HSP. My very presence waved a dinner bell for predators. Undeveloped femininity calls to the lowest level of masculinity, the predators. Um, I've put a link in the description box for the videos where I talk about um, how HSPs, well, what HSPs are and how they become people pleasers. I'm embarrassed right now. Make no mistake about it. It's hard to share this stuff sometimes. It shouldn't be, and I don't like to shoot on myself, but the truth is there's no way to know a thing if you've not been taught that thing. I couldn't understand or embrace what I didn't know existed. And when you're starving, you'll eat anything even rotten fruit. I wasn't taught by my dad how special or even different my femininity was. Instead, he starved me through 
invalidation and neglect. The source for every little girl is her father. And like I said, you can't know a thing if you're not taught it and you never experience it. The pattern for self-acceptance of a little girl's feminine nature is set in place by the first male in her life. She's imprinted by him to embrace either her own femininity or his masculinity. That's how Satan got to Eve. Adam was her source, the first male in her life. Masculinity is responsible for femininity, but he didn't appropriately imprint her femininity. She was emotionally unknowing, naked, and unprotected, gullible and naive, easy game for the predator that was watching and waiting for the best opportunity to attack. Adam didn't take responsibility for Eve. And then he thought he could further escape responsibility by taking the fruit from her instead of Satan. Eve was missing something that belonged to her from Adam and she was looking in the wrong place. She was emotionally hungry and that made her mentally undiscerning. Remember, as females, we think with our largest portion first, our estrogen. We don't think like males. So Eve was the first gullible and naive female trapped by a predator. You don't know what's underneath the shiny, fresh looking fruit. It looked enticingly good to her because she couldn't discern how rotten it was. The defense that she needed for self-protection from Satan, her imprinted femininity, Adam had withheld that from her. Like us broken lambs, when we're baited by wolves, they seem good for us. No one has loved us enough to teach us about ourselves and our femininity or about them. I was a broken-hearted female, nervous and anxious, troubled and turbulent because of the war going on inside of me, constantly living in the way that I thought I was expected to live in my masculine thinking, but never felt at home in my own body ever. I always felt constricted and restricted somehow. Eve's solution was to function in her masculinity because that's what had been validated in her by Adam. It didn't work for her and it didn't work for me either. As long as I lived in the masculine, orienting out of that little itty bitty percent of testosterone, my ability to observe and see was also itty bitty. I stayed blind in a narrow tunnel vision caught in that abusive trap. But as soon as God started to heal my feminine heart and nature, it was like blinders came off the sides of my eyes and that tunnel vision disintegrated. I started to view myself in a whole new way. Uh, and even that's not the right way to say it. It's like I was meeting a new Lily. I was meeting this little girl for the first time. I, I have a theory. You know how it's a common joke that men never really grow up, that there's always this little boy that just knows how to play and have fun? Well, I don't think that's entirely true, that women mature faster or before boys. I think in reality, what females do is kill that feminine little girl inside of her, because more often not than not, she's imprinted with masculinity instead of femininity. So she stops playing. Anyway, God had heard my distress call from the war inside of me and put my heart, mind, and soul in a spacious place by healing me. It's not what you do to your female frame that makes you feminine. Doing your hair, doing your nails, your clothing, or your jewelry, that's backwards. It's from the outside in. And, and I think that we do all that outward stuff to quell that crying little girl, the pain 
inside that little feminine heart that's suffering inside of us. God wants us to begin on the inside with the heart of the matter. What you are is what's inside of you. The quality of your healed feminine heart. Then your outward self-care follows organically. Closing thoughts. First, shh, don't say a word about this to him. Discovering that your husband's dangerous is a scary place to end up. It's never where you thought you'd be, and it feels like an unreality. But your silence about your awareness of what he really is, that's your safety zone. And always remember, a clueless guy that causes dysfunction and seems difficult, he's not dangerous. But the malignant man is not clueless. He just pretends to be difficult and dysfunctional so that he can hide how dangerous he is. <laughs>